Silva. Dr. Dilip Silva is health economist and head of human resource unit of the Ministry of Health. He is going to talk to you about Ministry of Health, card position, and there are so many medical officers now attached to health ministry, and uh, he will give you the details about health ministry position for the doctor. Uh, thank you, Madam the Chairperson and the SLMA for inviting me. Uh, I'll be speaking about the health ministry perspective. Uh, we are the largest employer for doctors in this country by a huge margin. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Ministry of Health is the second largest ministry in this country, only second to the uh, Ministry of Education. We have a staff of about 157,000 as of now. So I'll just give an overview of the specialties or the cadres we have. I'm not touching on each and every specialties, which we done by the respective colleges or whatever. Uh, if you can see, or you can't see these things. Uh, at the moment, we have about 2,200 consultants, both certified consultants in the Ministry of Health. The first uh, one. Then we have about uh, 20,000 medical officers, right? And we have 36,000 nursing officers. The, those are the key categories. And we have the paramedics, as MLTs, pharmacists, and all that. All together, about another 10,000. The total staff of 147,000. And just to show that out of my total budget, uh, we are spending about 220 billion. I'm handling the health account, so the part, uh, the, uh, for a year. We see 58 million outdoor patients, 58 million. The population is 21 million. Turnover time is 2.7. 58 million outdoor patients and seven in, in, in patients, uh, I mean, warded patients. So uh, uh, that's why we spent 220 billion Sri Lankan rupees, huge amount of money compared to, to our economy. And out of which more than 50% goes on salaries and wages. I have put for two years, you can see the yellow slide is for salaries and wages. Right, so it's a very, very labor intensive interest anywhere in the world. And uh, who funds our health? 52% uh, though we call it a free health system, more than 50 comes from out of pocket spend. We call loops or out of pocket expenditure that the people spend on their own money. And we at the government spend about 43% of the total ex health expenditure. And the insurance and all that comes about 4%, and the other agencies 1%. And the UN agencies all together, that is WHO, World Bank, UNICEF, all together spends less than 2% of our total budget. Then how much we spend for health? Generally, we spend about 3.6% of the GDP. World average is about 9. And if you list the countries, out of 195 countries, we are the 19 lowest spending wise. And we have never exceeded more than 5% of the government expenditure on health. We are, running, we are hanging around 4.6, 4.7. So we have never exceeded more than 5% of the government expenditure. But as a total uh, GDP, GDP is the gross domestic product. That's the total income of a country. We spend about 3.6. GDP including private sector as well. Okay, this is just to elaborate. These are three countries, right? I have put three countries. Niger is a Central African country, the Sri Lanka and Australia. And I have worked in all these countries. And uh, the common factor is that Niger's population, uh, the common factor in all these countries, the population is about 21 million, right? And uh, if you consider Niger, I mean, Niger can't produce the number of consultants as what Sri Lanka is producing, right? Just because you have the same population, Niger cannot keep on producing the number of consultants uh, the way we are producing because, see, the economy, the economy, the per capita economy of Niger is just $360, right? And ours, we are about 4,100 now. When I prepared this, it was 3,900. So our economy is 10% robust than Niger's economy. So Niger can't think of doing what we are doing today, tomorrow. And right? they are far behind us. And same applies. You all can't come and ask, right? Say that in Australia, we have so many surgeons, so many people, we want like that. Look at the per capita of Australia. It's 56,000 US dollars. And ours is 4,000. So their economy is 15 times more robust than ours. So we can't do overnight what Australia is doing, but we are gradually going towards that, right? This especially happens once you are qualified and you come and ask, 
I, I went to Australia for my foreign training. I saw these things. I want this and that. No, sorry, we can't provide it, right? And also, once you become a specialist, we are dealing with 59 specialties, right? And unfortunately, the, for example, uh, say the specialty X think that's the only part of the body, right? We have to do everything for that, that part of the body. And the specialty Y thinks vice versa, the same thing, right? So we have to deal with 59 specialties and the limiting factor is the money. Uh, this the about the carders. Um, at the moment, we have about 2,200 consultants, including acting, both certified about 2,100. The ratio is about consultant to medical office is about 10 to 1, which we can enough room to improve. And at the PGIM, which is the only institution uh, which produces specialist uh, medical doctors, and that's the only institution in the whole world where free higher education is given for medical staff. Only institution in the whole world. Right? They charge only a minimum amount for examinations. And at the moment in the pipeline, in all 56 specialties, we have 2,850 odd people. And uh, we have projected the uh, Ministry of Health needs about 4,800 consultants by 2025. And every year we recruit about 280 uh, consultants to the system. So if I put it in a sort of a very functional way, on a given day, right? I mean, how many days are there for the year? 365, take out weekends. Every weekday, we recruit a new consultant, right? Every weekday for the year, we recruit a new consultant to the system, right? So on average, we are recruiting about 300 new consultants to the system in 56 specialties. Uh, this is after reducing the attrition. Attrition rate varies markedly between the specialties. As a whole, uh, in general, the number of consultants who leave the system without serving the country is about 12%, right? There are some specialties almost one to two or zero, and some specialties going up to 36%. On average, weighted average is 12%. That means if we train 100 consultants, only 88 will work for us, right? And the average age is a little bit on the high side if you compare with the Western world. Maybe so many reasons that our tailors will get a gap here to get into the campus and the campus down strike every year. So like it's four to eight years. And the both certification average is that 32 years. This is also on the upside. And there are less takers in certain specialties. Like neurosurgery, people are not taken up. So we are thinking of uh, methods to push people into that, right? And certain people, certain specialties, are we producing too many? It's a bit of issue, uh, depending on our economy. And now the trend is people are going for subspecialties. And there are relatively new specialties coming like direct medicine, sports medicine, emergency medicine, and critical medicine. There are new specialties, so there will be uh, carders in the uh, closer areas. And uh, as a whole in the world, 71% of the health staff in the world are females, 71%, huge percentage. And we are just going above that now. Right? At the moment, we are doing some analysis, and we are hitting up about 75% now, So, which, is, which we have to cater for in a different way. Because when the staff is predominantly females, we have to cater for maternity leave, we have to cater for any other support issues or leave and all that. So I'm negotiating with the treasury to increase the card in order to buffer the female dominance. Then we spend about 11 million rupees for your PGM training, 11 million rupees of the taxpayers' money. It's not easy. The allowance, what you get when you go abroad in rupee terms, is much, is double of the president's salary, right? Uh, and the ministry has released the latest card projections, uh, and it's on the uh, uh, somewhat similar to that is on the web. I'll give the web, web link. Uh, and also, the, there's a misnomer that people think uh, we have a card saying we have a card for 60 neurosurgeons, 250 physicians, or 300 surgeons. No, we don't have a card like that. We have a block card. As when I go to the ministry, uh, to the specialty to create cards. Right? They don't give us for the specialty. They don't give us for physician, uh, surgeon, or gynecologist. They don't give us. We take a card that's called SL3 category, senior level 3 category. They give a block card. Right? So within the block card, it's our duty to assign you to different, uh, different specialties. So don't go by the uh, misnomer that the card is up. It's nothing like that. Right? We create the card for the, depending on the country's requirement for the all the specialties. Right? Especially, they never say uh, 100 carders for the physician, 200 for surgeons. No, they don't say like that, right? They give a block card. And uh, at the moment, it has been in the past and it will be for the, in the future, for the next foreseeable future, that 
Ministry of Health will absorb all the consultants that the PGM produce, right? That I can say for about next five years. And uh, uh, now we have uh, prepared the facility survey. We have, we have detailed which level the, your specialists are going to be placed. For example, we are not going to place neurosurgeons at base hospital level, right? We are not going to place family physicians at, uh, at teaching hospitals, right? So this list is published. It uh, came as a circular of uh, circular number is 0108. You better write it down. It's on the web. Go to the ministry website on 3rd of March 2020, and it gives like which specialties at which level, right? So I need not go to that. Uh, so that's the basic things which I want to say from the minister point, just to summarize, all the specialities we welcome, we have the capacity to absorb them, whatever the specialty you do it. Some have more demand, the others have less, and the respective specialties will demand on that, right? So some specialties we are going to rather limit, not to stop, rather limit by certain number, because at the moment we are getting too much on the pipeline. But generally, generally speaking, all the specialties we have enough capacity to absorb anybody who's become a specialist and you take the opportunity because it's the only country in the world if everything is free right you are education for 13 years five to six years in the faculty now another five years in the pgim right so you have to understand how important that so thank you very much thank you dr Didi. your presentation is really important to you some of these things afterwards which are new to me. Yeah. Now I think we see as the of the HR department. Are there any questions? Okay. Please fill up your feedback form and return to us. Our next 